So um, we're going to start. Uh, so uh, guys, who's already joined, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Tiraj, and I hope you're able to see my screen. Uh, can someone please confirm in the chat if you can see my screen and hear me well? All right, great. So uh, thanks for joining me today uh, for the workshop where I will be covering that how you can actually overcome some of the very first API development challenges and, and promote the digital acceleration uh, in your digital transformation. So myself, Dhiraj Rajotia, and I'm working as a, a solution architect at SmartBear. SmartBear is, uh, is, is a company which was founded in 2009, and we have 12 global offices across the globe. Uh, we have more than 24,000 customers and more than 15 million users. So uh, there is a plethora of knowledge available in our community because of this number. So the number speaks for itself. And uh, you might have heard about the open source initiatives, be it Swagger open specifications or be it SOP, uh, SOP UI for the API testing. Um, so not only just the API products, uh, SmartBear also have the solutions around the test management and, and the functional load UI testing, whether it's for your web or for the mobile uh, applications or also solutions around code review and monitoring. So today workshop, what I will be doing is I'll be covering some of the um, API challenges, uh, which are very common uh, in, in, in API life cycle. And then mm -hmm. I'll be going to uh, cover that, how we can overcome uh, these challenges uh, by the solution that we at SmartWare offer. Um, so, you know, the APIs, if you have seen the, uh, or if you follow, uh, if you follow the uh, talk, uh, talk from my fellow colleague, Christoph, uh, he mentioned that you know APIs are the foundation of our digitally connected world. So whether it's being working from home, uh, you know all the uh, applications are interconnected through APIs. So uh, API are purely essential. And, and of course, you know it's it's a very fast moving uh, space. So uh, keeping up with the pace, you must ensure that the quality is above par for your API, which will directly impact the adaption of your API itself. Um, so what are the some of the common challenges that one may face while developing APIs? You know, uh, one of the most common challenges that the designers, uh, it's difficult to get the feedback changes on the changes during the API development lifecycle. And now um, you may be uh, managing your APIs uh, uh, on a notepad, on a, on a Word doc, but you know there is no collaboration. There is no uh, contribution by your fellow team members to be able to you know uh, provide their feedback on the API uh, that is being designed by the designer. So it's very very uh, important that you have some sort of collaboration uh, or contribution mechanism in space in place for your uh, API development. And the other challenge that we often come across is that the APIs are inconsistent and they're difficult to understand and support. Um, of course, you know, if, if there is no, uh, if, there's a, if, if there's no center of truth a mechanism for your API, which means that if, if there's no collaboration, if there are no uh, team members are able to, you know, provide the feedback on the API. Uh, it, it becomes very difficult to track uh, your API. Also, uh, if you will uh, take 15 API designers and, uh, you know, uh, lock them up in the room and ask them to, you know, uh, define the API, they will come up with their own 15 versions of APIs, right? So uh, there has to be some sort of uh, standard. There has to be some sort of rules a mechanism in place so that everyone adhere to those uh, standards and your APIs are consistent. Also, you know, we work in a model where teams are distributed and we need to ensure that team can work in the same test suite uh, and not 
step on each other's work. Um, so integration with a source control, uh, a source control management tools. It's very important that you should be able to uh, manage all of your APIs from a central repository. Um, and you know, the API documentation should go hand in hand with the API designing itself. So, um, and also the quality. Uh, uh, quality issues are hurting the API adoption. So you need to make sure that quality checks are in place in every stage of your API lifecycle. Now, um, if we take all these challenges and uh, if we implement, if, if we just put these challenges um, and think of creating an ideal workflow for an API, this is what something we will, uh, you know, uh, will come up with. So ideally, the design uh, there should be a design first approach <clears throat> workflow for your API designing, right? So you should be designing the APIs first, uh, and you should be able to collect the feedback from your fellow members, from from your uh, fellow uh, designers and the internal team, so that they can give the feedback. And once you have the feedback, you know you can you should be able to version those APIs rather than managing the APIs, different versions of the APIs in the different systems. You should be able to uh, uh, manage uh, from a centralized location uh, and from a single source of truth. You should be able to uh, manage your versioning of the API. So you should, uh, in an ideal workflow, you design uh, the API. You collect the feedback from your fellow team members on the same API, and once uh, the uh, the changes are signed off, uh, the API is then handed over to the developers so that they can um, they can develop the API, and at the same time, uh, you can pass on those APIs to your testers so they can uh, start uh, start uh, writing the test cases for your API. Um, now, we have a solution that can actually you know. Uh, Import the APIs from uh, from the Swagger Hub solution that we offer, which can actually help you to design and document the API. And we have a solution called Ready API. Uh, most of you are familiar with the name SOAP UI. So uh, Ready API is is a pro version of SOAP UI. So what basically it does is it, it can actually uh, import the API from your Swagger Hub. And uh, so in an ideal workflow, you should be able to provide the API to the testers and the developers at the same time. So the testers, uh, they can do, uh, they can start doing the testing or writing the test cases and, and the developers, they should be able to, you know, uh, start writing uh, the coding for your API. Now, once uh, the uh, developers complete the coding and uh, the testers, they can uh, run uh, their test against uh, in, as a part of the build process. And then you can uh, pass on your API to the production. Now, where do I see the gap here is that what the testers will test across, right? I mean, the, the API is being sent to the testing team and at the same time, it's being sent to the development team. And now for the testers to be able to test their API, they don't have any service running uh, while they are creating the test case. So there is also a, a solution within uh, Ready API that can help you to virtualize those API and create the uh, uh, create the virtualized API services as well. So this is the ideal workflow that I believe it should be there as a part of your API life cycle, which can overcome the challenges where, which you uh, face uh, in terms of uh, collaborate collaboration or in terms of integration or standardization of your APIs, and at the same time, uh, making sure that the quality um, the quality checks are in place and making sure that you do the testing uh, in parallel uh, to, the development, uh, to, the, to the development of the API as well. And now, some of you uh, might be coming from the code first approach as well, where you already have some existing services and you want to make sure that you can still bring in your team members so that they can collaborate and uh, you can actually impose some of the rules so that there is a consistency in your API. So we have a solution. So there, there is a solution that we have uh, created, which, which, you know, um, which overcome all these challenges if you're coming from a code first approach, right? So we have uh, our um, Swagger inspector, which can inspect the existing services and uh, can help you to create uh, the 
API definition that you can then import into your Swagger Hub. And uh, from there on, you can just go on like the idea workflow that we discussed in the previous slide. So for today's workshop, what I will do, uh, let's just uh, see that how you can uh, how you can consume uh, the Swagger Hub uh, solution to be able to overcome these challenges. Okay, so I will just switch to my other window here. Okay, so this is the uh, UI of Swagger Hub, right? Uh, so as soon as you uh, launch the Swagger Hub, um, you will see this UI. So Swagger Hub, as I mentioned before, is, is a tool that can help you to design and document your API. And, and we will talk about three major challenges, um, uh, which is collaboration, standardization, and integration. Uh, so how we can achieve collaboration. So in Swagger Hub, there is a concept called organizations. Okay, so what you can do, uh, you have access to the organization and within organization, you can manage your uh, team members. So if I go to the organization settings, I have the option to be able to, you know, um, bring in my uh, team members to this organization and they can actually uh, come on board with this organization uh, that way they will be able to uh, that way they will be able to collaborate as well so now there are three uh, various uh, three different roles that you can assign to these users uh, a user can be a consumer which means that they can just have access to the api they won't be able to make changes to the api and then there is a designer who can actually make the changes to the uh, api and then there is owner which is more or less like an admin uh, who can assign the roles to the different members uh, within the uh, within the organization? Um, so how we can you know bring in these members and uh, you know um, create the API and provide them the power to actually be able to comment and you know provide the, provide their feedback on an API. So what I will do uh, as in for this workshop, let's go ahead and create a new uh, project first of all. Okay, so I've been going to create the project in my organization and I will name this project as, let's say, API Days Workshop. You create the project. Okay, and then I will uh, go ahead and create a new API. So I'm going to use a template, which is a pet store, which is an API, which can allow me to access the information of the pet. Uh, from a, a very general pet store. So I will just name this as API is one. Okay, API days. Uh, and I will put it into my organization. And the project is API days workshop project, the one that we just created now. And we'll keep this uh, visibility as private. Now there is also an automock feature. It's a very unique and good feature to have. Uh, so what this automock uh, feature uh, does, it actually allows you to create a static mock uh, from what you have actually defined in, in the in your API spec. Uh, so you will be able to try out uh, some of your API's operations within the uh, API document itself that you can see within the Swagger Hub. So I will go ahead and create the API. So as soon as I create the API, I should uh, see, first of all, uh, the, the editor. So you can see in the middle, we have the editor, which can allow you to edit your API or create your API or write your own API spec. And on the right-hand side, you have here uh, is documentation. Right, so this is the API document that you can uh, explore uh, plus, you have an option that you can try out uh, uh, some of the operations within your API just within this uh, UI itself. Now, this is a very useful feature for the testers or for the developers. So, for the testers, if they want to see that, what sort of uh, a response will they expect um, from this specific uh, API, they can just simply try it out. Let's say if I just click on try it out and send pet ID value as zero, I click on execute, I will get a response. 
right? So I now I know as a tester that what sort of response will I expect? And I can create my test case and I will add the assertion as per the response body that I received here. Again, as in as a developer, I will be able to see that uh, what sort of uh, um, what sort of uh, values that I will need to define as in while coding the API as well. So very unique feature and good feature to have uh, to be able to you know um, try out your API just within here. Um, now um, the uh, the the collaboration challenge that we have been talking about. Now, how I will be able to collaborate to this API as a designer. Now, if I want to, you know, add a comment to this specific API, let's say I'm just look, having a look at this API and I feel that, you know, uh, the description for this specific uh, response uh, for the specific operation is not correct. I can ask my team member at, can you please, have a look and make required changes. I can make a comment. Now, what will happen as soon as I make a comment here, all the designers of this organization will actually receive a notification in an email that a comment has been added on the specific line in your API. And later on, they can come onto this API and go to the specific line and make the changes here. And then they can simply resolve the comment straight away from here. Right, so one thing is that you can bring in your different team members to be able to collaborate in a way that they can provide their feedback in this API by using this comment section here. And now uh, you may think that what happens if there are like more than two or three designers working on this API at the same time. So uh, if you remember, you know, when we were talking about the API challenges, it was also one of the challenge that it's difficult to manage the different versions of the API and sometimes we lose track of it. So we have an option, there's an option in the solution that can allow you to add a new version to your API. So now uh, let's say if I'm a designer and I want to work on this API and I want to create a new version, I can add the new, uh, new version value and I can create a new version. So now I will work in 1.0.1 version of this API instead of 1.0.0 version of this API. Now once I'm, finish making the changes in this API, I can simply go ahead and, you know, merge all the changes just within this UI, just within the solution itself. I can compare the versions of 100 to 101. And then right now we have, we have not made any changes, but if there were any changes, I can just, you know, merge uh, the specs as required. And then I can save the changes uh, to the respective version of the API. Right, so that's a very unique way to actually, you know, manage your API's uh, different versions. And then there's also an option that I can collaborate, then I can share this uh, API with, uh, with the uh, third party uh, vendors if they are working as well. Uh, so if there's an external team I want to invite, they can also collaborate uh, on this API if I will share it from here. Um, so now, um, Talking about the core gen uh, option that we have within this uh, solution that we offer. This core gen uh, option will allow the developers to be able to export this API as in the client SDK for all these options available that we have here. Or if you want to export this as a server stuff, there's also an option that uh, the API can be exported as in the server stuff for the developers to take it up and start the coding. Um, now, this was all about the collaboration, right? So now you may ask that how you can bring in or enforce the rules to be followed by all the, uh, all the designers of the API. So we call that, uh, um, we call that approach as standardization. Um, so standardization, actually allows you to enforce the rules within your organization uh, so that there is a consistency in your API development. So if I go to the standardization here, I can see uh, that what, what sort of standards I want to uh, apply on my API, right? So uh, there are certain standards within the operations that I can uh, apply 
in, in, on my API. So for example, if I want to make sure that all, all the operations must have at least 2xx response, I can enable this so that we can ensure that all the operations or whosoever designing the API has to include the 2xs response for all the operations. Otherwise, there will be an error that you will see in the API. So uh, for this demo, for an example, let's just check this. And not only this, but you can also create your own rules, custom rules. For example, you want to ensure that there is no slash uh, extra slash in the end of the path of your operation, right? And uh, you can create your own rule. So there's an option that you, you, you will be able to create your own rule uh, using the regex, like the one that I have created here, which ensure that there is no extra uh, uh, slash at the end of uh, the operation uh, in my API. So let's just save these changes. Okay, I have enabled this to access response. And I will go back to my uh, API. So if I go back to the API, go to my project, this was the API that we created. So now you can see this, and uh, now you can see this red bar here at the bottom, which says that there are 11 errors in my API. Now these errors are because of the uh, because of these uh, rules that we enforce from the standardization. Right? So it's asking that you know you can see in your API in, in line number 41, you can see that it is expecting a 2xx response for this operation as well. Because if you see at the responses here, there's only four or five uh, uh, response to this specific operation. And uh, also in line number 55, you can see that there are different responses to this API, but it is still missing the 2xx response for this operation. So it's very easy to ensure that there is a consistency and all the designers are actually following the same uh, rules. Um, also, if I will add any additional uh, slash at the end of the path, I will see another error. Uh, I will see another error uh, in my uh, in my list of errors down below as well. Um, if I will just save it, cancel, save it from here. So you can see now there is an error which says that there is an additional slash at the end of the path, and we should remove this slash. So it's just the way of showing it to you that how easy it is to enforce uh, the standardization and make sure that your APIs are consistent. And now uh, the third challenge, the, the third very common challenge is to ensure that all of your team members are actually working on the same version of the API, or at least uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are working on an API which is being taken from a central repository. So what can be done here is that you can actually, you know, uh, integrate your API uh, with the various integration options that we uh, that there that there are that are available in this solution, such as if you want to uh, integrate your API directly with any of the API gateways, or if you want to integrate it with GitHub. Uh, so let's just go ahead for this workshop. Let's just integrate with my GitHub repo. I will connect to my GitHub repo here. Now it is connected. I will select uh, the uh, repository as Swagger Hub APIs, and I will name the branch as, I'll create a new branch, API Days. And we'll name it as API Days API. We'll just give it this one. And we'll name this integration as API test integration. 
Okay, so uh, we are ready to roll now, and we will just simply just change this again. Okay. I will just create and execute. Okay, so it is saved now. Okay. Now, if I go back to the integrations here. Uh, let me just go to my uh, GitHub repo. Let's have a look at the API which, which has been pushed from here or not. We may need to resolve the errors first. Okay, let's just give it another go. I will disable the standardization for now to remove all the errors. We'll go back to our APIs. This one, all good. Go to integrations, let a new integration again. Okay, and let's just leave it as is. Create. Okay, so we have this integration just done now. And now we can go ahead and sync it. We can push the changes. Now it is done. I can go back here to my Swagger Hub APIs. We'll see here in Swagger Hub. And this is the API that we just triggered or just, you know, published from straight away from our Swagger solution. Uh, so, so this is the one that we just pushed from our Swagger Hub uh, solution. So this way you can integrate your uh, APIs uh, with, the, uh, with the CSM and uh, that way you can ensure that all of your team members are working on the same version of your APIs that way. Uh, so these were some of the uh, few challenges that we discussed uh, within the APIs, which is you know uh, about uh, how you can bring in your team members, how you can ensure that there are proper rules are enforced in the APIs, and how you can uh, basically uh, you know integrate your APIs um, with uh, uh, with your CSM uh, uh, repos. Um, now let's just uh, uh, go back a little and have a look at our workflow once again, right? So. We are right now, we are at this stage, right? So we've been able to uh, uh, finish uh, creating the APIs. We have the APIs, the developers uh, are using the uh, SDKs or the stubs that are generated within the Swagger Up solution. And now, uh, as in as a tester, how I can consume this API uh, and start doing the testing. So there is a solution um, uh, called Ready API that we have. Uh, in our uh, platform, which is uh, which is Ready API, and which can actually allow me to, you know, import the API within my Ready API solution. So Ready API is a platform, and uh, that can basically allow you to, uh, you know, do the functional testing, load testing, um, security testing of your API. So all of your API testing needs uh, can be covered within the Ready API solution. 
as soon as you uh, launch the Ready API platform, um, you will see this UI, and then there is a project section uh, wherein you will be able to manage the projects um, that you will create against uh, uh, your API uh, testing. So for the workshop, let's just uh, go ahead and create a new project. And now, as soon as I create a project, uh, let's just talk about a little. Uh, let's just talk a little about the structure of this project. So you see the APIs here. You see functional test. You see security test, performance test, APIs virtual. In, in API section, you will be able to see the definition of your API. This is where you will import your API. Let's just go ahead and import an API definition. Okay, so uh, you can import the definition API definition, which can be in any of. Uh, um, the uh, any of the formats which are supported by the solution. It can be a Vistel or Redl file, or it can be a Swagger specific file, or uh, if you have a GraphQL schema or any async API as well, that can also be imported to this Ready API platform. For the workshop, what I will do, I will import the API straight away from my uh, Swagger Hub platform, uh, from where we actually designed and documented the API. Uh, let's just search for API days API that we just created today. So this is the API that we just created a couple of minutes ago. I can select this API and import it straight away from uh, my uh, Swagger Hub platform into the Ready API platform to be able to create the tests against this API. Okay, so now here I have uh, all the API definition. I can just navigate to the uh, various operations within my API. Uh, I can see uh, what all the various uh, operations are available for this API, and I can go ahead and you know start doing the manual testing if I want to against any of the uh, operation that I have here. Or what I can do is I can simply go ahead and start creating the tests. Before I create the tests, there is a very important thing that I'm missing. I don't have any API service to test against. Uh, so even if I write the test case, there is no point uh, that uh, creating the test case because I will not be able to test it against anything. So um, to overcome that challenge, what we have uh, uh, developed here is to be able to virtualize the API uh, that you just imported, which means that you can virtualize the API service and you can run your test against that virtualized API serv uh, service itself. Okay, so what I will do, I will right click on my uh, API and I should be able to generate the virtual st service straight away from here. If I click on generate virtual service, a virtual service will be generated here. Just allow the access. Okay, so as soon as I click, uh, click on generate virtual service, uh, it will ask me that what are the resources I want to include in that virtualized uh, service. I will just select all of them for now, and this virtual service will actually run on my local machine on a port which is 8088. OK, I will click on OK, and then I will be able to see uh, the virtual service running uh, within this Ready API platform. So let's give it a couple of minutes. Yes. So now you can see this Swagger Pet Store virtual service, um, which is available uh, for, for the testers to be, you know, test their uh, uh, the functional tests again. So you can see here we have all the um, resources of the API, and then I can define what sort of response I want to send uh, back to my request. I can define those response straight away from APIs uh, from this virtualized API itself. And also, it's very easy to generate the test cases as well. So we have this API. I, if I want to create the test case for each of the resources that I have within this API, I can just simply right click on it and generate test suite. Okay, so this will 
you know, allow me to generate the test suite straight away from here. So now I have all the test uh, uh, cases generated against uh, the APIs and that I have within my project. I can just now simply go ahead and create my test case. Okay, so as soon as you create the functional test, so this is the UI. So if I just go back to one of uh, the requests here within this functional test, this is the UI which will show me the request section of my resource. And on the right hand side here, I have the response section for my resource. In the request section, I can define the parameters. Okay, I can define what sort of parameters I want to send uh, in this API. I can, on top here, I can see what is the method which is used for this API. What are the, what is the endpoint that this API is referring to? And what is the resource and what are the parameters that are being sent? Also on the top right corner here, you can see that there's an option to set up the different environments. And we'll come on to that section in a minute. But before that, I want to show you that how you can simply send a request from here. Um, so let's just send a request. Right now, I'm sending a request to this endpoint. I'm not sending the request to my locally virtual virtualized service that I just created now. Okay, so I will just go ahead and send the uh, request. I will receive the response, which is here on the right hand side. Now, I want to add some assertion to be able to you know, generate my test case. I want to ensure that I'm getting a specific response uh, code uh, from the response uh, when I execute this specific test case. So what I can do, I can add the assertion, let's say, uh, for checking the valid HTTPS code. And then the, or otherwise, there's also an option uh, with the, we have just introduced a new smart assertion that can allow you to, you know, um, that can allow the complex validation uh, for data and metadata of the messages. So it will just populate all the response, all the fields uh, that you receive in the response with all the valid values. And then, I, then you can just, you know, uh, select which values you want to assert when you send a certain request. So I will click on save. Here and then that assertion is now added. Now, if I will just send it again, it will just fail because we are. So it's it right now. It's saying that you know uh, the pet is not found, right? So that's how easy it is to add the assertion uh, within the Ready API platform. Now um, I can also run this test against my local uh, virtualized service, which is running, which we just created a couple of minutes ago. So I can select that. And I can run my virtual service here. And then I can run my test against that specific virtual service. So right now it's running against my local uh, virtual service. I can make changes uh, to the response uh, um, of this virtualized service. For example, here is the uh, response. Uh, here is one of the uh, method. I can just simply change it and uh, based on the parameter, I want to send uh, the specific uh, uh, request. I want to send the specific response based on the parameter that I'm receiving in this request. So I can create a new rule. I can make sure the path parameter pet ID when it is equal to one, send the response as one. And what does the response one says? If I just select this response one. So it says this specific response, which is ID zero, and the name is doggy. So if I just go back, so this is the rule that we just created. And what does this rule say? If it is equal to one, then send the response as one. So if I just go back here and change it to one and send it again, 
So you can see we are receiving this specific request uh, response. So that way you can create your own responses based on the different path parameters that you are receiving in your request and, and create your own virtualized service. So that's very handy because if you want to run your test and you want to ensure that your test cases are created appropriately and that when you actually run them as a part of your build process, when the, uh, when the service in, is in production, you can simply just take these test cases and run them against the, uh, uh, the actual service, which is in the production. Now there's also, so now if you want to do that, you know, there are various options uh, which are available in this platform, such as the environment uh, uh, section here that we have. So environment section will allow you to, uh, to be able to run your test against a specific environment, whether it is your local environment for the virtual service, or whether it is actually uh, the uh, production environment or any UAT environment. So that way you can actually create your own environment. UAT, let's say prod, and you can then go ahead and add the endpoints to that specific environment. Okay, so let's say, That way, it's just a sample, just to show it to you. And if I just add the endpoint for prod as well. So we have two different endpoints for UAT and prod environment, and I will click okay, right? So if I want to run my test against, let's say UAT environment, I don't need to change the endpoint here. All I need to do is to just select the environment here. Now, if I will select the environment as UAT, you will notice that the endpoint will automatically change to uatpetstore.com. And it's not only just for this specific request, test request, but also if you go to any other request, the endpoint will reflect against the environment that you have selected here. If you select the prod, it will change the endpoint to the prod. Now this comes in very handy when you want to run your test in parallel in the different environments and so that you can ensure that your API is, um, is, is, is working all good. All right, so um, that's how you can set up the environment. And also within the environment, you have the option to be able to, you know, uh, uh, to set the specific database for the specific environment. Um, so that whenever you select that environment, a specific database will be selected. Um, this platform, it has integrations available with different, uh, uh, with different API gateways or with the third party integration such as Git uh, or with the CICD pipeline as well. Okay, so if you want to incorporate your API testing as in the automated way, as a part of your, and you want to include that as a part of your CI/CD pipeline, we have uh, the um, we have the plugins available for Jenkins, Azure DevOps, and if you also want to spin up the instance of Ready API um, in in a Docker containers, we have the images available uh, for that as well. Um, now you know this was the ideal workflow. Uh, and we, we, we could actually cover the testing part uh, as a part of our um, the complete API workflow itself, right? So we could actually design and you know, seamlessly integrate it into the testing part as well. Now, I want to, uh, what I want to do as in the tester, I want to, uh, uh, as a DevOps engineer, I want to include this as a part of my CACD pipeline. So you can actually run this whole project as in your CICD pipeline and uh, the plugins that we have. So for this workshop, I am running an instance of my uh, Jenkins uh, environment. And if I will just go to my Jenkins environment from here. I can trigger the test from the Jenkins. 
Now, before I uh, trigger the test from Jenkins, I want to uh, mention here that right now what we've been doing is all locally. Now, let's take an example that where there are like more than 10 API testers who are working on Ready API at the same time. You want to ensure that they are actually being, uh, first of all, using the same uh, uh, same uh, source code, right? So you want to ensure that there is some sort of integration with uh, CSM uh, repo. Uh, so you can straight away integrate with Git uh, with the integration that we have here, right? So you can just uh, connect to the remote repo and then uh, make this project as composite. And you know, uh, as soon as you do that, you should be able to use the uh, repo within your GitHub and you know, um, commit your changes and push all of your source code to your GitHub repo as required. So I do have one of these uh, projects that I've already uploaded to my GitHub repo. And what I've been doing here is I, I will actually try to run this test. Now I don't. Now right now all the tests are running in in local machine. Now what if there are uh, the ten testers they want to you know trigger all of the test execution, the ten test execution. So we have uh, a solution uh, called Test Engine that can basically allow you to uh, run your um, tests in parallel at the same time on a specific server, which is just designed to be able to you know run your API test itself. So. And there's also a test engine which is running in my machine locally. Let me just open that. So what I will do for this workshop is I will trigger my test from Jenkins onto the test engine and everything can be done remotely uh, as, you know, the test engine will actually run on a server that can be accessible from any other location and likewise the Jenkins as well. All you need to ensure is that your uh, project directory is up to date in your GitHub repo. So I will launch test engine now. Let's give it a couple of more secs. In the meantime, I'm just logging to my Jenkins. And I will also like to take any questions if we have any. In the meantime, don't see any questions so far. Okay, so we do have our Jenkins now up and running, and I can go to uh, my uh, dashboard and go to my Jenkins job, which is actually running the test from my Jenkins plugin. So in Jenkins, if I go to configure configuration of this specific job, uh, what's happening here is it's it's actually using I'm 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 actually consuming the plugin that we have for Jenkins to be able to run my Ready API test on uh, my test engine server itself. OK, the test engine is also up and running now. I'll just switch back to Jenkins. So here you can see I am connected to my GitHub repo. This is where my project is. And um, I'm actually running this test in my test engine. So this is the plugin that I've been talking about that we have in Jenkins. Now this plugin can allow you to run your test in the test engine. And there are various options that you have if you want to just run the specific test suite in your project, or if you just want to run any specific test case, you can specify that. You can also mention which environment you want to run your test against from Jenkins environment, from Jenkins itself. So you don't need to do any manual uh, changes in your project but you can actually select the environment or you can select the test case or test suite that you want to run from within the Jenkins itself. So I will just save it and I will go ahead and you know build this 
test now, what will happen? It will actually run the test. And if I go to my Jenkins and I will, if I just refresh it here, you will be able to see uh, the test that we just triggered. The test is still running. So if I go here, I go to the run history. So you can see that it's still running. So this is the uh, test that we just triggered from Jenkins onto the test engine. And there was no role of Ready API as such because we can just bypass and test engine will actually take control of the test execution that we are running from here. Uh, so, you know, there are vast amount of possibilities around the API uh, designing and API testing uh, that are available. Um, you know, well thought solutions that we have within Smart Peer that can allow you to uh, very first challenges that you face within the API uh, designing or within the API lifecycle as a whole. Um, and you know, the time couldn't permit us to uh, for me to actually show you to uh, show uh, you the other capabilities that are there in Ready API, such as to to be able to do the load testing. So, um, or to be able to uh, do the security testing. Um, so all those features are also there in the well-thought solutions of uh, the smart gear itself. So we are reaching at the top of the hour. Um, I will just take a pause uh, and to see if you have any questions, please feel free to you know type in your questions in Q and A section here. And so if you don't have any questions, any of you, so you know, you can always feel free to reach out to me at thiraj.rachoti at uh, smartbeer.com. Um, so you know, feel free to uh, feel free to drop an email or anything if you want to just have a quick discussion on the on 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 discussing about the various challenges or uh, what you think about uh, the challenges that you come across uh, in your API development. Uh, and you know, if you want to just uh, have a quick discussion to just understand whether we can fit in your ecosystem to be able to assist you uh, in API uh, designing and development or testing, uh, feel always feel free to reach out. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, I'll just conclude uh, uh, the workshop uh, for today. Um, really pleasure to be here. Thank you everyone.